What's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Austin and today I'm going to show y'all the right way to explore and settle planets in Starfield. Now I'm not going to get into any actual settlement building, but I am going to show you how to find the absolute best places to set them up. The key is finding a spot like this, a landing site where two biomes intersect. The border between them will be ripe with resources that would normally require multiple outposts to harvest. This also makes scanning and surveying planets quicker and easier because you'll find a larger variety of plants and animals in each landing site. But mainly this just makes the game more fun to play and the planets more fun to explore. I mean, climbing up and over this mountain ridge to discover a completely new vista on the other side brings back a hint of that majesty of traveling by foot found in all of the other BGS games. So I'm going to show you how to do this for yourself. First, let's take a quick look at the planet map. So if you scan it, you can reveal this overlay. It gives you a good idea of where the resources are located. It's a nice reference, but it is not perfectly accurate. Instead, the resources located at a landing zone are tied to the biome. So if I click this section here, it shows that biome to be hills. And that's in the nickel area. So of course, you will find nickel here. If I click this section, that's still showing the biome to be hills. I'm still going to find nickel in this area, even though it's not colored in on the map. Now, some biomes are going to have multiple different resources found within them on this overlay. For instance, right here, click this area, we get the swamp, this water section. There's some aluminum pocketed inside of it. I click in the aluminum area, it still shows the swamp. So what this means is regardless of where I land, if it's a swamp, I'm going to find water and aluminum there. Now, if you can see this landing site we were just at, it's right on that border between the swamp and the hills. Sounds pretty simple, but it's a little bit tricky. Let me show you a couple more sites I've done this at, just so you know what to look for. So here we're in the Delta Pavana system, pretty close to Alpha Centauri, just right down below it. The next place we're going to is the Serpentis system. It's a little bit further out over here in the corner of the map a little bit. Not quite in the corner, this is the very edge, but it's getting over to this side. And we're going to Serpentis 4. It looks like I'm going to have to make a couple of jumps to get there. But this is the landing site we're going to. It's an area I found that's right in between the coniferous forest and the mountains. And here we are on the surface of the planet. As you can see, we're definitely in a forest region. The trees here are sort of reddish. The ground has almost a yellowish texture, yellow-green. And let's climb over this ridge here and see what's on the other side. It's a bit foggy here, but as you can see, the trees across this valley are definitely different than the ones that we found around the landing site. These are much taller. They're also greenish. Now over here, we see these weird coral formations that you're not going to find on the mountainside. So clearly here we found another border. Now I could go across this here and scan the plants that would normally take two different landing zones in order to find. Same with the animals as well. And the resources. But mainly it's just fun to actually explore across these different parts of the planet seamlessly. Again, this planet's pretty foggy, but you can see on that side of the valley, the trees are red. Over here, they're taller and 
more greenish and then the actual ground is red over here where it's more of a yellow texture on the other side now if we open the local map you can see the border runs right this way horizontally across the entire landing site now if i didn't already know where it was just come across it organically it'd be pretty hard to pick this out I mean, there could be a border, it kind of looks like there's one here. There could even be a border going this way. So usually, it's hard to find these just based on the local map alone. But I'm going to show you all one more example where that really is not an issue at all. Alright, so back to the map. This time we're going to go just here above the Crick system to Murphid. And we're going to be traveling here to a moon of Murphid 5. It'll be Murphid 5D. Alright, so here we are. Open the map. You can see I've already built an outpost here right on the border between the frozen plains and the craters. Alright, we got a cargo ship taking off. This is the outpost that I've set up here. As you can see on this side, we've got the craters. I've got a bunch of helium being extracted from the ground on this side. And then back in the distance, we've got the frozen plains. And I've got some extractors over here gathering resources that would normally not be found in the craters biome. And this is one of the easiest borders to find just due to the stark contrast between the snow and whatever else you pair it with. And Craters is also one of the easiest to pair with. That's due to the local map. You can very easily find the Crater geography if you search a little bit. Over here you can see very clearly we've got those distinctive Craters. And when I first selected this landing zone, it told me I was landing in the frozen plains. So when I checked this map, I was very sure that I had successfully found a border. I just had to search a little bit. And once I found the border, I did have to traverse up and down it a little bit as well in order to find a spot that has all of the resources that I was looking for. Now I'm going to go to a similar place on this same planet that's got a border between the craters and the frozen plains just to show you that it can be done anywhere let's open up the map now let's try it on the bottom hemisphere now it is a little easier if you do this on a daytime side of the planet especially if the textures are not as distinctive between the two biomes that you're trying to merge with and these actual textures on the planet from the map are not 100% accurate either. They give you a good idea of where the biomes are. Like say over here, we've got the plateau. Here we're going to have the craters. This is going to be the frozen plains, but the border is not going to be perfect. And same with this overlay. This one's going to be a little more accurate, but again, if you land here, we're still getting plateau that means we're going to get this nickel if we land there. If we land over here, that's going to be frozen plains, and this is the craters. So the idea is you want to start in the area you're trying to blend with. So in this case, it's going to be craters. So we're going to start as close as possible to the frozen plains without actually selecting it. Here we go, craters. And then you're going to inch down pixel by pixel as little as you can trying to get as close as possible to frozen plains. So here we go, move a little closer, craters, 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 frozen plains. So this one should give us a border. Now, if you want to practice this, there is a good way to do it. It seems to be very, very similar to the way the coastlines work. So let's back up here and we will travel to this moon orbiting the same planet. Alright, so here we are. Let's just ignore this bounty hunter for a moment.
And let me find a good piece of coastline just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, this seems like a good spot here. Say we pick like there. Seems like it's pretty close to the water. Should get a coast there, but no. It's not reading as a coastline. To actually get the coast, you're going to have to move a little closer to the edge. There we go. Now we've got that coastline. If I go just the littlest bit west, I'm not on the coast. If I landed here, it would be landlocked. If I go a little bit east, then I'm in the ocean. Ocean, 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 coast. Not coast. See, that is kind of the level of sensitivity that you're looking for in trying to find these borders. Anyway, let's back up here. Bear with me one moment. Let's find a good spot to do this here. Let's pull up the resource map because, again, this border seems to be a little more accurate. And we'll start, and say, right about here in the craters. Let's move a little closer. Craters. Frozen plains. Again, craters. Frozen plains. So right here, we should get a border. Get out of the ship here and check the local map. Any luck? There should be some pretty obvious craters somewhere in this area. And there we go. Looks like we've got some craters right here. Yeah, we definitely got some craters. Looks like we're already going in the right direction down here to the south. Walking over this ridge, it looks like we can already see that border here. Clearly we've got snow on this side, but off in the distance there, it is all melted. And this right here is what you're looking for. So again, you might have to traverse this scene for a while before you find a spot with all of the resources that you want. And you can do that using this outpost beacon. You pull it up over here. You see on this side, we've got argon, H2O. And then in the crater side, you're gonna find aluminum and titanium. But sometimes you'll find other resources as well, depending on the planet. The base I was just at, I'm getting aluminum and helium from the crater side. Then off on this side, I've got H2O, Argon, and Benzene. But again, you'll have to look up and down this seam right here until you find a spot where you can collect all of the resources. Now this can be done on any planet in between two, any two intersecting biomes, but this is probably the easiest combination right here, especially because of the stark contrast between the snow and whatever else you pair it with but craters is also really easy due to the distinctive geography on that local map I'll just show one more time again if you look over here you can obviously see some craters but when we selected this landing site it told us we were going to frozen plains so you can very quickly see if it worked whenever you're checking a crater biome as long as you land in the biome right next to it. Now, of course, a lot of the other biomes are not going to be as easy to find, similar to the forest and the mountain example I showed earlier. 
the geography looks pretty much the same and it's hard to find the border just from the local map. You're going to have to actually survey the terrain a little bit. Anyway, shout out to Off Meta Professor because I did not know this was possible until I saw a video he made showing how to use this technique to find a spot with six resources on a single base. After watching that video, I spent hours scouring these different planets, trying to figure the system out, looking for borders, and it took me quite some time before I was able to find them consistently, but using these tricks, I find one almost every time I land on a planet. I'll leave it up to y'all to actually find the spot out here where you can get everything. But if you search up and down this border, you're sure to find multiple resources, far more than you would if you were simply landing in a single area. Just to show, yeah, you can get helium off in this direction. And that's really what makes craters such a good biome to combo with anything else. Because if you're going to be setting up outpost links, you're going to need a lot of helium in order to fuel your cargo ships. And this way, all of those bases can also be farming additional resources as well. And as a result, you're not actually going to need as many cargo links in the first place. All right, last thing I'm going to do here is just go to my swanky penthouse here in New Atlantis where I have a little constellation mission board set up. I'm just going to take a random mission from here and find a planet in that system with a border, just to show that it can be done literally anywhere. And yeah, this looks good. Let's go to the Namira system. All right, so here we are. Just to show where it is relative to everything else. It's just up here, the top of the map above Cheyenne, a little farther up. Let's see if we can't find a planet. This one's got some marginal life on it, so we'll go here. All right, now let's take a look at the planet. Scan it. Again, that can help you find what type of different biomes you will have on this planet. So up here, obviously, that's going to be frozen mountains in the cap of the planet, sort of the poles. we got regular mountains over here. we got hills, mountains, hills, and a forest. So let's just try to find a spot between mountains and hills because, yeah, that will probably be about the most difficult thing we can do. If we can do that, then we can find a border between anything. So let's go over here. Got mountains, 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 mountains. Now again, see, it looks like this whole area here that's not colored in is going to be mountains. And we go over to here, then we'll have the hills. So you can use these maps, both the actual texture on the planet and the resource map to get a good idea but it's really not going to be perfect use this over here to figure out where you're at the border when you're just when you move one pixel away from the area you're supposed to be in that is when you found the border so we'll start with hills 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 Hills. And mountains. Landing initiators, watch flaring. Alright, so as we touch down here in the mountain section, I'm just going to quickly look around the area before I get out of my ship. There's definitely some mountains off in all directions around the landing site, but where we are here is honestly pretty flat. But then right off in front of the ship, 
the ground looks to be a different color. So let's go see what's going on. Now, if anything, these mountains in front of us look taller than the ones on the other sides of the region. But a stronger indication of this border is the way the color changes to green over there on the ground. The trees look a little bit different as well. There's definitely still some of these red trees over there, but there also seems to be green ones that we're not really finding on this side. So, from my experience, you're going to be better off surveying the flora, the texture of the ground itself, over looking at the geography, because almost all of the biomes are going to have some mountains like this. They're going to be pretty spread out and varied. Yeah, and as we get closer, you can see this theme where the texture changes. And clearly, we found the hills biome. Now, well, let's check the local map, see how apparent this border really is. So if we zoom out a little bit, Looks like the border is running this way, vertically, across the entire landing site. Now, if you know it's there, you can see it, but it's not the easiest thing to find. If we just checked this right out of the ship without looking around, it would have been hard to pick up on. So it looks like there could even be a border here, a border up here. And that's another thing I want to mention. These borders are going to run completely across the landing site from one side to the other, either north to south or east to west. I've yet to see a border or a coastline that has any kind of jank 90 degrees or diagonal stuff going on. They're always going to go straight across the landing site from one side to the other. There might be a little variation, like some zigzagging back here. Maybe a little bay if it's a coastline. But typically they're going to run all the way across the landing site. Another thing, they're really not going to be too far away from the ship. I have not come across any that are all the way at the border. So if you leave your ship and do a little circle, say about maybe a kilometer, one and a half kilometers radius around your landing site, if you still haven't found a border, then I would not continue going all the way out to the edges on these landing sites because I've never found a border that far away from the center. If you get about halfway in all sides, you still haven't seen one, your best bet is just to take off and try to find a spot a little bit closer in between the two neighboring biomes. Now, one other thing too, is these are not necessarily going to line up with the way you expect them to based on their orientation on the planet map. So we go back here, we'll scan it, find the resources, the biomes. Mountains is on the south hills is in the north but that's not the way this landing site has oriented itself the biomes are split east to west or east to west either way and in the previous location we were at it really didn't make a whole lot of sense at all if you think about it we landed on the south pole of the planet then we had to go south to get to the craters from the ice it really didn't make a whole lot of sense so don't rely on your compass. Again, the best bet is just going to be to actually survey the area. It might help to land firmly on each side in the mountains and the hills first. That way you kind of know what you're looking for. Honestly, I have no idea why Bethesda did not highlight this feature in the game. Because I mean, this absolutely improves it. I mean, it fundamentally improves the way you explore. It makes these planets feel cohesive. Without this, it almost feels like all the different biomes and landing sites may as well be on separate planets. This really blends everything together and makes it feel like you can actually travel and explore. Of course, there's all the benefits from you know, the resource gathering, the scanning, but really it just makes the game a whole lot more fun to play. 
makes all of the planets you visit more interesting, regardless of what type they are and what biomes you'll find there. Because each of the landing zones you visit will just be more interesting. There should at very least be an indicator to show when you've selected a border region, similar to the coastlines. In this case, it could show swamp, border, hills. That way, at least you know when you've selected a border region and you don't have to worry about any of this guesswork. But if you're really, really careful with that cursor, then you can find these pretty easily. They're usually not going to be too far from your landing site. See, the border in this case is only maybe about four or 500 meters from the ship. Now, I have tried to get three biomes in one location. I've also tried to get two biomes bordering along a coastline, but so far I've been unsuccessful. Comment in the comments if you have any more insight to this game's perplexing procedural generation. And whether you're looking for a new outpost or just looking to explore, I hope this helps you get more out of your journeys across the settled systems. Thanks for watching.